Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all good. In this video, this is continuing on from all of the botanical coasters that I've made recently. And I said that I was planning on top coating and if you'd like me to bring you along while I do it, let me know. Several of you said yes, so here we go. So I decided to incorporate three different ways to protect your resin. I figured it would really help within the top coating video. So we've got the masking tape, the liquid latex and the PVA glue. Now I've never used PVA glue, so this was a new one for me. I'm also gonna talk about the pros and cons of all three. So here you see, why do we top coat? You don't have to top coat, but like this one here on the right hand side, this was my Pampas grass video. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it here. The one on the right, uh, it's a little bit bruised on the top. It's come straight from the mold without a top coat. The one on the left has been top coated. It just takes it to the next level and makes it extra, extra gorgeous. But these coasters are rounded on the edge, so I'm gonna talk about that as well. One thing to know is always wear your mask when sanding. I am actually going to sand all of these coasters before I top coat. The reason we do that it gives the resin a good grippy surface to cling to. You can top coat resin without sanding. It's just there's a chance it might pull back and you'll end up with dimples and fish eyes in your work. Now I am using 1000 grit sandpaper here dry. I tend to sand wet so I do actually move on to 600 grit wet and sanding wet just also helps reduce the dust which is why I do suggest if you're sanding dry like you see me here make sure you've got your mask on you do not want to be breathing up those fumes sanding wet just prevents any of that resin dust getting up into the atmosphere and into your lungs so here you see me going over really lightly now these coasters don't need a lot of sanding they're not truly damaged on the surface I'm really just looking to bring them up a level to beautiful. <laughs> it really depends on your mold. If you've got a new mold, your resin will come out super shiny, but I have used my molds over and over and over and they're just dull. They're a little bit dull, so I want that super glossy finish. So here you see me use a wet wipe just to take off all of the dust and this is a very sped up of how it quickly it goes back to dull. So I've sanded it, I've wiped all the dust off and there you see it goes back to dull. So the next stage for me is to go ahead and sand all of my coasters and this is what they look like before sanding and this is what they look like afterwards. Really dull, I've taken off all of the surface. Bottom right you can see that is the one I did already top coat and yeah, I love Love, love, love seeing these come back to life when we use a top coat. Now for the Zen inspired botanical coasters, we're gonna go with PVA. I've never used PVA, so this is all exciting for me because yeah, it's not something I've tried before and so many of you have recommended it to me. Now I am putting on my layers thick. I am sure I'm gonna get comments saying that was way too thick, you've put way too much on, but truly for my own peace of mind, to know that I've done it correctly, I decided to go with a thick coat. And the PVA is going on so nicely. So the pros of PVA, it's nice, thick and easy to spread. There's no risk of it pouring over the edges. Easy to control, it's allergy free, and it's really handy for awkward shaped items. So if you've got a geode shape or a crooked edge, it's really good. The con, it takes time to dry, but I'm gonna talk about drying times as well in this video. So the deep pour, the, the coasters I made that look like the forest bottom, <laughs> the, you know, the muddy puddle that I was talking about in the video. These are gonna get a coat of liquid latex. This is my go-to liquid coverage. I either use masking tape or liquid coverage. The pros are it doesn't self-level, so you've got more control. It will stay where you put it. And as a result, it's just really, really handy for awkward shapes. The cons, it stinks. <laughs> it absolutely stinks. There's a risk of allergy and, of course, it takes time to dry. 
But with safety first, the biggest con, of course, is a latex allergy. So if you are allergic or if your customer is potentially allergic, that is something to take into consideration. The final ones, they are getting the mask and tape treatment. The pros, it's so fast. It's easy to apply and you can top coat immediately. Um, the only cons, and I was really struggling to think of a con, but it's not great for awkward shapes. So it just would take so long to trim. If you were trying to coat the back of a crooked shaped coaster or a geode mold, anything with zigzag edges and things like that, oh, the trimming back would just take forever. They were the only, that was the only con I could think of. Um, the pros far outweigh the cons on the masking tape. And you see me just putting it on and simply cutting it off, which is why this is generally my go-to method, especially if you've got a square or a round. It is my absolute go-to. I will only usually use latex on a crooked shaped base. Now, here you see me just firming it down around the edges. Theoretically, it's ready to go, ready to top coat. The fourth way, which is not my bag, not my cup of tea, but I'm showing you anyway, is to wrap um, masking tape around the base of your piece like this. I've seen people do this and then rest it on top of a pot of some kind and then pour your resin down over the top. It will pour down the sides, down the masking tape, and then you peel back the masking tape. Now, I never ever do this. This is not my thing at all I think it's going to leave a really harsh line between the fresh top coat resin and the bit that hasn't been touched so for me this is a no-no just thought I'd share it with you in case you say it in the comments so here we are we are done the pampas grass on the right ready to go ready to top coat masking tape easy peasy the middle layer latex ugh, and the left PVA I'm saying ugh because oh my gosh I was hoping to get this video done in a day, but when I tell you how long these took to cure, again, I know I've put a thick layer on, but this is for my own peace of mind. I need to know that no resin is getting underneath because the sanding afterwards is not worth it for me. The aftermath is not worth it for me. I need it to be good. So here we go. Four hours PVA, three hours latex. Well, masking tape was ready. It was, in me. It was an immediate ready to go sealing protective system and that Again, that's why it's my go-to. So here I am just flipping them all over. The bases are completely dry. We are ready to top coat. So for the purposes of the video, I've only got six in shot because nine was upsetting my equilibrium. <laughs> I can fit six into the screen so much easier. Now I am using a top coating resin. So the two I would recommend would be Glass Cast 3 and also Vista Rapids. Now I have Glass Cast 3 and it really is my go-to for top coating because I haven't really used Rapids. I don't know enough about it to use it for these purposes. Purposes. So here you see some beautiful close-up shots. I actually mixed this resin for five minutes. If you know me, you'll know that I stir for five, even though the instructions say three. I stir my resin for five minutes. The resin bottle got a hot bath. I have spoken about this in previous videos as well. This helps it, um, helps the viscosity. It also reduces air bubbles anyway. Um, so my resin got a hot bath. I stirred for five minutes and then I left my pot of resin to sit for 10 minutes. These are all the ways that I can help my resin reduce air bubbles. But look at this. Look at this. Oh my goodness me. So this is 600 grit sanded and it brings it back. Actually, I just think it's ma it's not magic. We know it's not magic. It's science, but oh my gosh, I love the reveal. You would have seen me do this in a previous video when I talked about top coating last year. Look at this. It's almost like a window into another world when you pour the resin on and you get that image coming through from underneath. I absolutely love it. So in this video, I am flood coating. Now flood coating means I'm going to allow this resin to pour over the edges. The reason I'm doing that is because these coasters have got rounded over edges. They're not straight 90 degree angles. Now, if you have got items that are straight 90 degree angles, you can still use the same protective methods on the bottoms. I still do that, but 
because I'm flood coating in this video, it's even more essential, essential that you protect the bottoms of your pieces when flood coating. Oh my gosh, I absolutely, I absolutely love, I love these coasters. These coasters have sold already and I actually did say like, I'm top coating them at the moment. I just hope they come out okay because somebody has already requested to buy them. But here you see another gorgeous shot of that resin opening up the underworld that is the forest floor. Oh, sounding a little bit like Attenborough now, guys. <laughs> but here you see the resin going over the edge. Now, really, when we talk about flood coating, it really is only essential if your items are rounded edged. Ideally, I try not to flood coat, but I don't have a choice in these situations trying to get this resin to stop at the edge when the edge is rounded well you're kind of fighting a losing battle the only thing i would say is try to minimize the spill off i know resin over spill is wastage and i do try as much as i can to reduce the spill off when i do the flooding coat um but all of my resin does not go to waste. I do scoop it up next day and I have got a drawer full of resin, which Mary, if you're watching, I still need to post to you. So here you see me coating the edges. Now I did sand the edges of these because I really want that resin to stick to the edges. If you don't sand the edges, there's a chance it will just pour down the sides, pour off, and then you'll get kind of like a bumpy edge so I do go around you see I had to move them away from each other to give me more freedom and more room but I go around with a gloved hand rubbing all of those edges thoroughly to make sure that that resin has stuck now with the gold pen I didn't sand those edges because I'd put the gold pen on there I was just hoping the resin would yeah just go down the side and treat me well <laughs> So here you see me just picking up some resin off of the tabletop to rub around the edges. And that is pretty much how I top coat using the flooding technique. Now you can see the spill off, the runoff is real. I did try to minimize it, but yeah, all you want to make sure is that those surfaces that were sanded have been coated in resin then it won't ever leave it won't leave the surface because it's got a grippy surface to hold on to the next stage for me is to give them a torch so this is my culinary torch i've already done as much as i can to get rid of the bubbles like the hot bath leaving my resin to sit for a while but the torch is then essential so, oh my gosh, look at this shine. This is next day. Again, this is glass cast three because I haven't really experienced much with rapids. This is glass cast three. The shine is real. I can see right down in the sides, every little seed that I now know is the pampas grass seed. All of the stones, I love, love, love how it has brought these coasters to absolute life the first one we are going to take off is the latex the liquid latex again if i'm using a fluid protection liquid latex is my go-to then we're going to look at the masking tape and the pva but the first one for me is the liquid latex now to get into the liquid latex i am going to use my craft knife because trust me it is impossible to get into <laughs> unless you cut into it it is strong stuff. Liquid latex is strong, strong stuff. So here you go. I just got me a hole. Once you get a hole, I'm showing you here. I can't even rip the rest with my nails. It is super strong. Maximum protection for your epoxy resin. And as you can see here, you just peel back the edges and it is a dream. And there's a lot of spill off on these, a lot. But see how the liquid latex handles it. None of it actually seeped under the latex. The latex did an incredible job of protecting my bases, bottoms. I keep wanting to say bums. <laughs> it protected my bottoms really, really well. So yeah, 100% would recommend latex but there are the other factors to bear in mind. We're talking latex allergies and if your customer has a latex allergy. So did an amazing job. And you can see here, it picked up every little drip 
And yeah, I was really happy. This one I was nervous about. I was so nervous about the PVA. So many of you said PVA. Now, the other thing to remember is that PVA is so much cheaper than latex. If you're looking for a liquid protector, PVA is cheaper. So the first thing I noticed was even though I put it on thick, it was so easy to get off. So, so easy. Um, it was ripping all over. I could rip it with my nails so you wouldn't need a craft knife necessarily. But yeah, it's doing an amazing job. I was so happy. I was like, this is ideal in a sense. So pretty much identical to liquid latex, cheaper than liquid latex, no fear of allergies. It doesn't smell as bad. So right now, PVA glue is winning my heart over liquid latex without a shadow of a doubt. There was just one little pesky bit here that I thought, oh dear, but it came off. So really, really happy. The only thing to mention is that it did take off the gold pen. It took off the gold pen, not the PVA, but the resin. The resin ended up taking off the gold pen when I peeled back the PVA. So yeah, I do need to do the gold pen again. Here we are with the masking tape. As always, an absolute dream. This is 24 hours later. Sometimes, depending on what you're making, you might need to use a hot gun, a heat gun, to heat the resin to peel the tape off. I personally have never had to do that. I've never had to do that. Um, but yeah, it's an absolute dream. Dream, dream, dream. Again, if I can, masking tape is my go-to. It is my absolute go-to. Wins hands down over absolutely everything else. The speed, it's ready to pour. As soon as you've taped the bottoms, it's ready to go. It is my go-to. But again, awkward edges, I can't use it because it would take just as long to cut... <laughs> to cut it off of all of those awkward edges. So here you see the top coat is an absolute dream. I'm loving the results of these. I hope you found this really helpful. If you did, do not forget to give me a thumbs up. Please comment down below if you found this video helpful. Let me know which one you'd use. So my order, two, three, one. So in first place would be the masking tape just for ease. Second place for me would be the PVA glue. And third place would be the latex for all of the reasons. <laughs> Thank you so much if you've stayed this long. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this video informative, if nothing else. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.